Okay, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about rule locus. So in the previous video, I talked about how do we use uh, the rouse Harris criterion to check the you know, stability of a, of a control system. In particular, if I give a, a, a control system, which include unknown or uh, undetermined variable, and we can also use the rouse Harris criteria to check the range of this unknown variable, such as the system is stable. So let's give an example. If I give you a certain uh, closed-loop transfer function given by this, and in which I have a unknown uh, parameter which is k, now we can use the ross horowitz criteria to check the range of k such that the system is stable. Okay, so uh, I want to repeat that. If you know how to do it, you can check my previous video. So that actually, in terms of the uh, when we talk about the from the design point of view, not only we want to know the range of the you know the, the 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 you know the k unknown variable such that guarantee the system is stable. We can also we also want to know to be a more a little bit more precise, meaning that I want to know if I give a variable such as for example k, if I want to change the k from zero to infinity, for example, how the how do my uh, the, how do the pose will change over time? So that's kind of more accurate than the Ross Hurry criteria because the Ross Hurry criteria only talk about stability. Now we want to know a little bit about how the closed loop, the pole, the closed loop transfer function will change with respect to the actual parameter. So that's a little bit more, uh, more specific. So there's actually two problems we typically want to answer in terms of this uh, when we have uh, unknown variables. So from the design perspective, we want to see what kind of value of k should we choose to meet my system performance requirements. Not only from stability point of view, but also from the you know, other performance, for example, how fast we should reach the the desired you know state, for example, or steady state, <clears throat> or what is overshoot we have. For example, I want to have, I don't want to have a large overshoot. So, in that sense, we want to know how the actual pose will change when we change the parameter k. The other one is called a effect of a variation, which means. What if in my system we have some variable which may change over time? For example, when we when we have a car, for example, the the mass of the car will change over time because the gas, when we the when we run uh, hit the gas pedal and it, it consumes the gas and the actual mass will change over time. So how does the the change of uh, the, the the change of certain variable will change the overall performance? Okay, so let's all go back to the problem with what if we have certain variable which would change, and we want to know how the, the the change of this variable will affect the stability and even the performance of the closed loop control system. Okay, so that's what we talk about called root locus. Okay, to give you a brief idea about what's happening, for example, in the previous example, I give you here uh, the closed loop trans function we're given by this. So, because the pose of the closed loop transfer plays an important role in terms of both stability and also the performance, so actually we can sort of plot the pole where the poles are located at for different case. Okay, so here I give you a few examples. I don't just care. I, I didn't calculate this value per se. I just just put in some values like case zero, case one, case two, case three. So here I'm drawing just a some of the locations of the pose, I just make it up because I don't, I didn't check this this pose uh, spe as a solution specifically. Just make it up. So, for example, if k is zero, so this black one, this represents a pose. I use x to represent a pose. So you could say k is zero. I have I have three poses. They are located at this location. Three here, here, here. So when you change the k to one, for example, you have here, 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 right? The three, the red ones. Here, these three poles. They, they change the pole, the location of poles will change because I change k. Similarly for case two, okay, the pole location change. Similarly for case three, so also it could change. So you, as you can see, as I change the k, it looks like the pole will change. Okay, will change. So our question is, okay, how the pole as the k change? How do I know what is the pose will 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 change? Like where will the pose move to? Like what is trend of the my of the pose? So that's kind of key question of the root locus. So actually, the root locus talks about, you know, 
how the poles will change with respect to a variable, for example, k as I mentioned over here. So that's the key, uh, you know, uh, key, uh, key insight or key problem that Rulox is trying to solve. It's trying to describe how the poles will change with respect to a variable. Apparently, there's some, you know, a lot of setup when we talk about it, it depends on how well k appears. For example, k appears here and k appears, this will be different if we swap these two. The, how the k will affect the <coughs> pose will be different. So to talk about the, you know, give a, to get a little concrete idea about those uh, rule locals, we typically have a, what do we call a typical setup. So the typical setup is given by this. So we talk about a typical setup when we have a variable here, we talk about a, a variable given by here is k. And then we give a system, which is, this is typically called this g sub s. And with a unit negative feedback, you can sort of consider this case uh, the gain for the proportional control. So we apply a proportional control for a given system with a negative unit feedback. And we want to see how this change of this k will affect the poles of the closed loop system. Okay. When you have, you can also sort of, when you have, you can, of course, this one doesn't mean you also have a proportional control. Even if I have a proportional integral control, like given by k times 1 plus 1 over s, this will be a proportional and integral control because this one can be written as k plus k divided by s. So this will be just proportional. This will be just integral. So you have proportional integral control. Then you, well, well, even you have this one, you can also rewrite it that you can move this one, absorb this one in this form, this, 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 put them together. If k is given by this, you still can have this k over here. <clears throat> well, you put, what we'll do is, you can still have put k over here. You only change this one to 1 plus 1 over s times 1 over s squared minus s minus 2. You still can make a change to the form, so you still have the standard typical setup. So we can also do this way, okay? Even if for some complicated case, we can still write it in the in the typical setup. I'll talk about. I'll give example later on. Okay, so typically the the <clears throat> the typical setup is we can for this one we can compute the transfer function. Okay, given by y sub y sub s divided by u sub s, and which is given by this. I want to compute it. Just compute doing compute this. We actually try to look at how this k value will uh, how we how the change of the k value will affect the Pose of the transfer function, meaning that how the pole, the change of k will change the solution to this guy. How this will change with respect to different k. <clears throat> so what we can see here, the system is not stable for any k is positive. Okay, well, how can we do that? You can, also, of course, I can give the conclusion here. Of course, you can check, but you can use the Raspberry's criteria, then you can get the conclusion over here. Actually, if you look at the, if you draw the rule locus, you can directly see this is not stable for any k, okay? So that's also the benefit of the rule locus because you don't even need to compute all, the, all this one. For the, even for some complicated system, you don't have to use a rule locus. For a, a Raspberry's criteria, for example, you can use a rule locus to tell if the system is stable or not for some k, okay? So when you have the proportional integral control, same things like this, yeah, you can also, what we can do, we can write, do the same way, okay? Now I can write this form, right? This can be written in this form, okay? Now for this one, we can say, yeah, this does, we can find a range, the range of k such that the system is stable. So what this tells us is, by using the uh, root locus, like a root locus, you can easily tell, you can fastly check if a system is stable for all k is positive, okay, generally speaking, okay. Now, you can sort of tell, if I use a, uh, the rule locus, I can direct test this not state for any k. Well, but if I use a P, uh, PI control, which means I sort of changing my original system by having one more, uh, by changing this as this form. Now I do have the system can be stable for some, some k. This also tells us certain 
in the in the control design because the k the proportion control is not sufficient to stabilize the system while the proportion integral control is uh, is sufficient can be can stabilize the, the the given system g sub s okay so we'll talk about more example later when we when we how we use the rule locus to determine why this is not stable for all k okay so the key question is how to plot the rule locus that de describe the change of the pole's location with respect to variable okay so that's the key question that's also what the rule locus is about this is exactly what is rule locus is about okay so as I mentioned to you that we talk about the typically talk about classic setup uh, which is a unit negative feedback with a control gain which is K for a given system G sub S so typically the G sub S, the, the G sub S does not include K we cannot include K so only K that we can see here is, is, is right over here so this GSF does not include K. So one typical question people might have is what if I have different setup? I don't have a static as a standard class setup. Does it mean I cannot use the 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 rule locus that I talk about later on? How to draw the locus later on? I cannot use the approach here? The answer is no. Because I can always rewrite system in certain way that it, it, it is very similar to the to the to the to the setup, to the um to the classic setup. I'm going to use just the example I mentioned to you here because this is not a classic setup because this is not a, a negative uh, uh, unit negative feedback with a proportional control. Okay, so can we somehow rewrite it away in this form as well, or maybe something similar, maybe not exactly the same way, but something similar to this one, so we can still use uh, the classic setup to, and also the later on the the, the ten rules I will talk about to draw the uh, rule locus. Okay, that's kind of the question. Okay, all right. So I, I want to show you that we can we can indeed do that. So how do we do, do we do that? Okay. So if you look at this one, so if I look at this one form, I can write this one as so I just pull as a pole because the pole is in, uh, uh, the the denominator really important, right? Because the numerator doesn't it doesn't matter what you have, what number you have over here. It only matters what you have over here. So just pull this out and write this one as put a k outside uh, and k over here. Put the other uh, factors uh, entries that do not have k together. So I do have this one. Once I do have this one, I can put this one as something time one plus k s divided by s q plus four s plus one. So what I do over here, I want to have somehow like this. Okay, why do I have want to have that? That's because if I look at the standard form, if you look at the standard form over here, this transfer function is given by what? The, this standard form, the classic setup is y sub s over u sub s is k over g sub s and 1 plus k g sub s. If you look at this one, I want to have a 1 over here, right? So that's why I want to write this one as somehow 1 plus something form. And also there's a k over here, one, there's k over here, so also k over here looks like we're good. Because we have some form like that, okay. All right. So once we do that exactly like I mentioned over here, what I do over here, I can rewrite this one as the numerator, uh, denominator. I can write this one and uh, replace by this form. I give this one, and then I sort of can write this one as this guy divide by s because I wanted this one to be exactly gs. If you look at this one, it's kgs. Uh, divide by one plus k g s. Of course, k really doesn't matter. I don't care if it's if it's k or not k, even not g s. So if I look at this one, I have something time g s divided by one plus k g. Of course, what we can do is I can put a k over here and also divide k. It really doesn't matter. Now this will be this part will be the classic setup as I mentioned over here, right? The so only part here is I have s. Of course, I have a k. K doesn't it really doesn't matter. Okay. So if I look at this one, I do have an S over here. I can write somehow this one as, of course, this one has to have a K over here, KS. So I have a, this one S squared plus 2S plus 1, the KS. And this one will be exactly, this part will be exactly, if I draw somehow over here, write this portion. This one, if you use a block diagram, diagram, you can get this which is exactly this so that's why and I have this one is cascade time this one is just this one time this one that's why this one exactly is this okay now 
This one is standard for classic fault. Now we do have this one. So one question I have is, does the existence of this S over here, because this one looks like I have another, another pole, right? It looks like the transfer function has another pole. Does the existence of this S over here mean that the closed loop transfer function function and the closed loop trans transfer function has a pole at S is zero? The answer is no, because I have here, the answer is no, because in the classic setup, I have S. So this S will be canceled out. That's why this won't be, we won't have a pole over here. So which means from the closed loop trans, uh, closed, the pose of closed trans function point of view, what I want to say is, I only need to look at this. So this guy, this portion, the pose of this portion is equal to the pose of this one, S squared plus 2S plus 1 divided by S cubed plus 4S squared plus KS plus 1. They have the same pole because you don't have extra pole over here, right? So there's no pole. So this is equivalent as the previous one, and this is the same as this portion. That's why I can only look at this one, the the classic one set up. Which I can ignore this. Basically, I can ignore this. Can be ignored. I don't have to look at this one. This one doesn't affect my poles. Only this part will determine my pole. That's why it doesn't add more poles. So I can sort of say this one can be written equivalent written as a classic form. A classic setup, so which can be used. Uh, we'll talk about the ten rules that we can we can plot the the rule locus uh, for classic setup. Okay, so that's why we don't necessarily have to say that the system must uh, be given in the classic setup. So we can always most of cases we can rewrite the system in a way that we can. We can we can sort of uh, rewrite the system in a classic setup. But then we use the uh, rules, ten rules I mentioned in this uh, in the in the next uh, two or three videos uh, about how to do the plot rule locus. Okay, so next talk about you know the next part of this lecture. I will talk about some rules that are used to plot the rule locus for the classic setup. Okay, so the emphasis here is a classic setup. Okay, so here I give a class setup which is given by the typical unit negative feedback with a control it is a given system with a G of S and control is given by K proportional control. And also we here assume that we have for the G of S is given by a typical formula G of S is given by P of S and Q of S. Both P of S and Q of S they are polynomials of S. Here I'll give you an example, for example, G of S could be given by S divided by S Q plus four S plus one. So PS is the numerator and QS denominator. They are both polynomials of S over here. So here I'm going to talk about several rules, uh, a few rules. Uh, of course, there are the many rules. So I'll talk about several rules and I'll continue in the next video. So rule number one says there are n lines or low key where n is the degree of QS or PS, whichever is greater. Okay. And also the degree of a polynomial, because of Q and P, they are all polynomials. The degrees of polynomial of S is the highest power of S in the polynomial. For example, if I give a Q S is S cubed plus 4S squared plus 1, so the highest power is just S to the cube, so the degree is 3, right? And also for the P of S, degree is 1, because the highest power is S to the 1, okay? So for example, if G is given by S to the square plus 4S plus 3 divided by S cubed plus 2 squared plus 2s plus 1. So ps is the numerator, basically it's s squared plus 4s plus 3. And qs is sq plus 2s squared plus 2s plus 1. So the degree of ps is 2 because the highest power is 2 here. The degree of qs is 3 because the highest power is 3. Okay? So we can say there are three lines of loci. Three lines of loci. Okay, I haven't talked about how to draw the line, but you can tell there are three of them because the 3 is greater than 2. Okay. The rule number 2 says, as k increases from 0 to infinity, the pose of the transfer function, of course the closed loop transfer function, moves from the pose uh, of g sub s to the zeros of g sub s. Okay, what does this mean? Okay, so let's say if I give you a, still a standard form of this, right, and which g sub s is given by p, uh, p, uh, p sub s divided by q sub s, okay, 
Of course, what is the zeros? What is the pose of a G sub S? The zeros of zeros of G sub S determined by defined by we set a PS P sub S to be zero, and we we'll find the solution. So these are the zeros, and the pose of G sub S is given by when we set Q sub S is zero, and S and we find a solution. That's called pose. Okay. So what is the rule number two says? Okay. Uh, the as k increases from 0 to infinity, the pose of transfer function move from the pose of gs to the zero of gs, which means this also the the it's called a loki. Okay, the line, the line actually is from moves from the pose of uh, g sub s to the zero of, uh, to the pose of g sub uh, pose of g sub s to the zero of g sub s. Okay, for example, if I give the g sub s, which is s plus one, uh, which is divided by s, remember here. Okay, I want to mention emphasize here. This is not equal to the transfer function, okay? This is not a transfer function. This is just the close the this is system, okay? The 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 zero pose. It's not the closed loop transfer function. The pose of the closed loop transfer function, okay? So for this one, the g of the zero is we set the numerator to be zero, okay? And the final solution, which is the s is negative one. The pose we set is uh, s plus two, okay? S plus two is set of zero, so s is negative two. So if I if I do this one, I can see according to Rule number two, of course, how many lines of do we have? So first of all, how many lines or loci? I have one, right? The reason is because the the, the degree of the PS is one, degrees of uh, QS is also one. So it's one, so it's uh, we have only one line. So which means we only have one uh, pole. For every K, we only have pole. And the, the rule number two says k increase from zero to infinity, the pole will trans of transfer. So this is, if this is a closed loop trans function, so typically I also want to emphasize a little bit. So pole I use x to represent the pole of the open loop trans open loop g sub s. Is I use x to represent the pole. I o use the circle to represent the zero. Okay. So rule number two says the line move as k moves from zero to infinity, the line move from the pole. To the zero, so I do is well, I draw over here, move from pole to zero. So this is my line. So this guy is my line or low key. So what does this mean? This means as my k moves from zero to infinity. So as k, if I move from zero to infinity, that change. So my my uh, the pose of this closed loop trans function will be somehow doing this so it's always you can see it's always negative it's always so this is always stable it doesn't matter what k is like it's always stable because it moved from negative to one okay here also i say why it doesn't go up or go down go down let's go crazy okay there's additional rules later i'll talk about but it will stay on real axis over here okay so it means just it's going the root locus of, of line says how the root or the pose will change? It just move here from next to one. So what this is what what the rule number two says. Okay. Of course, I could have some more complicated case. For example, I have a G surface given by this, which is s plus one divided by s plus two times s plus three. Okay. The zeros and s plus one set to be zero. The uh, numerator set to be zero. So s s is negative one. So I put a zero over here. So zero. I Product of zero. This is the negative one. Okay, the poles are okay. S plus two times s plus three is zero. So I set the QS to be zero. So I have s is negative two, s is negative three. So two poles over here. So I draw it over here. All right. Okay. From what it says, okay, the pole, the as k increases from zero to infinity, the pole of trans function, which means the loci of the line will move from the poles to the zeros. Okay, pose of G sub S. So it means the pose will move from poles to the zeros. Of course, I have two lines, right? So how many lines, again, how many lines do we have? So I have two. Because this degree is one, this degree is, this degree here is one, the degree here is two. Okay, the reason is two, because this is S squared plus five S plus six. So the highest power is, Two, so I have two lines because 
the greater number for the degree of PSQS is 2. Okay, so I have, to have two lines. So one of them is just from here to here. The other one is just from here goes to negative infinity. Okay, so I'll talk about later on why this is the case. Okay, just what it says is just you go from here 0, the pole to zeros. Okay, this guy also from pole to zero, you can sort of consider zero is infinity. Okay. What if I have to go to the opposite one? Okay, what if you have G sub is given by, uh, you know, S plus one times S plus three divided by S plus one. Okay, so basically here I have uh, two zeros. Okay, the so zeros are here. So these are zeros over here. I have one pole. Okay, right over here. So this is negative one. This is negative. 2, negative 3. Again, so how many lines? So it's 2 because the degree of the Q surface, this is degree is 1. So degree, this is a square plus 5s plus 6. So this degree is 2. So the the, the degree of uh, the P surface, P surface is larger than Q surface. So I have two lines. And also the, the according to the rule number 2, it says uh, line or the low key will move from the poles from the poles to the zeros of course this is from pole to zeros i have two lines this will you can see you have infinity move back to zeros so okay this is rule number two okay so generally speaking you can also i can summarize what we what i mentioned be, uh, before the, the three examples so typically speaking if i have the number of poles and number of zeros you just have the pole to zeros Pole to zeros. If you have a number of more poles than the number of zeros, you have pole to zeros, and then you, have, you also have pole to go to infinity. If you have more poles than the number of zeros, uh, the pole, number of poles is less number of zeros, you have pole to zero, and also you have infinite to zeros. So that's what's the different cases. Okay. This is rule number two. Rule number three says when the poles are complex, they appear in complex, in conjugate pairs. This is pretty, you know, straightforward because if I look at the, if I like say G sub s is given by P sub s divided by Q sub s because this Q sub s there, Q sub s they are polynomials. Of course, they are real coefficients. Let's say s to the two s plus three for whatever it means. If you have a complex, complex conjugate pose, it must uh, appear in conjugate pair because each it doesn't. Let's say here. Equals zero, right? Then you have a k, right? If you do a closed loop here, you, if this is g sub s uh, one plus k, as is k g is k g sub s, right? If you compute this, you set a one plus k g sub s equals zero, right? You you can use a pole because it has all real coefficients, so the the poles must appear in pair for all k, which means it must be somehow like this. If you appear, you appear in pair, which means the poles will be a symmetric uh, uh, along the real axis so up and down and if you're on the real axis yes you still symmetric along the real axis of course it, it never happened like this you have a uh, one going to the first quadrant and then for the third quadrant it never happened either second or third once or fourth okay or it wouldn't happen like this you have a pair like this it won't happen okay this is rule number three it's quite a uh, straightforward Rule number four says at no time will the same line or locate cross uh, cross over itself. Okay, so which means somehow I say if you say the reason this is true, you can also somehow this is true because you cannot cross over itself. Okay, for example, this is a pole. This is zero. I only have one pole and one zero. Apparently, what happens is according to what I mentioned before is uh, the rule number two is from the poles to zeros something like this. But it never cross itself. This is this point is called cross itself. This is cross. So this is impossible. It will not will not happen. Okay. So I'm gonna stop over here for the first uh, four rows and so rows. So next uh, lecture I'll talk about more rules. So you sort of can see why that's the case. Why you know what I draw over here. In this case, of course, the there there will be more complicated. Uh, uh, cases when we talk about the real locus and uh, when we talk about more rules in the next video.